An imploding tanker car. How could this happen? Tanker cars are giant, 70 feet long, 15 feet high, thick steel casing meant to contain things like fuel, even in case of a derailment. How could something like that spontaneously implode and crush itself? Well, if it did in fact happen, it had to do with pressure and pressure differential. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me show you with this metal can. If I take this thin metal can and seal it and then hook a vacuum pump up to it and start pumping air out, we understand what will happen. It will crush itself. Whoops. But how could something like that happen without the action of an outside vacuum pump? Well, let me show you. Now I'm about to perform a critical action in this experiment, and that is to take a little bit of the hot water and pour it into the can because in the original myth, the tanker car had been steam cleaned inside and out. Now I'm about to initiate an implosion. First thing I do is cap the can. Now fully capped, this vessel was full of steam and air that was heated to its boiling point. Now that air is rapidly cooling. As it's cooling, they're creating a negative pressure inside the can. Yep, and that's the whole ball game. A difference in pressure. Filling the container with steam pushes out the air. But if the vessel is sealed while it's still hot and then allowed to cool, the steam condenses and the internal pressure drops, meaning the now much greater external pressure pushes in on the surface. And that's bad news for the can. Oh, there we go, there we go. Ooh. It's actively moving, look at that. <laughs> I'm doing this with my mind. In case you were wondering, this is all telekinesis. <laughs> mind games aside, the scientific principle is clearly sound. Now, it's just a question of scale.